Welcome to Season 5 of Public Health On Call, a podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. I'm Joshua Sharfstein, Vice Dean for Public Health Practice and Community Engagement and a former health commissioner here in Baltimore, Maryland. Our goal with this podcast is to bring scientific evidence and experience to shed light on critical health issues. If you have questions or ideas for us, please send an email to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. Hi, I'm Lindsay Smith-Rogers, producer of Public Health On Call. Today, our topic is an infectious disease other than COVID. It's called Candida auris, a type of yeast that is causing a wave of serious hospital-acquired infections across the country. Dr. Josh Sharfstein speaks to Dr. Tara Palmore, the hospital epidemiologist at the George Washington University Hospital and a professor of medicine at the George Washington School of Medicine. Let's listen. Dr. Palmore, thank you so much for coming on to Public Health On Call to talk about an infectious disease story that is not the pandemic. It's hiding behind some of those headlines. It's a pleasure to be here. So we're talking about Candida auris. Can you tell us what Candida auris is? Candida auris is a species of Candida. Candida are yeast, which are normal organisms that are in or on our bodies and are really ubiquitous. Candida auris, it was identified first in 2009 and within a few years became a hospital pathogen, um, became a hospital acquired organism. In 2016, the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, put out a call for cases and published uh, their first case series of the first seven cases in the United States. And after that, Candida auris became what we would call an emerging pathogen in hospitals and has become increasingly a hospital-acquired organism in the U.S. So from the patient's perspective, what happens? From the patient's perspective, this is actually often doesn't bother patients. And that's because it colonizes patients most often. Um, colonizes means that patients become silent carriers of Candida auris. And when they're silent carriers, they're not infected. That means Candida auris is on their skin, um, typically, and that when it's on their skin, it's not causing an invasive infection, but it can cause an invasive infection in people who are vulnerable, which are generally patients who have multiple medical problems or indwelling devices like uh, central venous catheters or who are on a ventilator. And and what happens for those patients? Um, In those patients, they can develop bloodstream infections, um, which are um, obviously very serious. Now, a couple of times you have mentioned swabbing the patient for Candida auris. What does that exactly entail? When we're checking to see whether patients are colonized with Candida auris, we swab the skin of their groin and their underarm. In the studies that were done to see what were the most sensitive sites to look for colonization with this yeast, those studies actually looked at swabbing the inside of the nose, the mouth, the throat, as well as the axilla or the underarm the groin, and the rectal area. But it turned out after studying all of those areas that the most sensitive sites, in fact, are the underarm and the groin. Dr. Palmer, in infectious disease, is there ever such a thing as too much information? There's really not. So what makes this particular kind of yeast such a problem? Because, you know, there's yeast all over our environment, but we haven't really heard about it causing a problem in the hospital. What's unusual about Candida auris and that makes it different than other species of Candida is that it can be multi-drug resistant. So some other species of Candida can infect hospitalized patients and can also be resistant to antifungal drugs. This species of Candida in some ways acts more like a multi-drug resistant bacteria in a couple of ways colonizing patients and spreading from patients who are colonized 
is really a behavior of multi-drug resistant bacteria more than it is typically a behavior of yeast. And the second thing is that Candida auris sticks to hospital equipment and hospital surfaces and can spread from those surfaces. Now, I think I know the answer to this question and I'm not going to like it, but has the COVID pandemic made it easier for this new pathogen to spread or has it gone down during the pandemic? Well, I think you know the answer. (laughs) This organism, um, like other multi-drug resistant organisms, has spiked really during the COVID pandemic. Um, One thing that's important to note is that Candida auris is most frequently found in long-term care facilities in patients in long-term care facilities, particularly those where patients are on ventilators. But from those facilities, patients are transferred to acute care hospitals. And so that's how it finds its way generally to acute care hospitals. In acute care hospitals and in, in facilities of all types, COVID has caused enormous disruptions of the normal routines of healthcare. With staffing shortages and with shortages of PPE, there have been, I would say, systemic lapses in infection control and prevention. Um, For example, less surveillance for multi-drug resistant organisms. So where people might undergo swabs to be checked for Candida auris or to be checked for other multi-drug resistant organisms, um, they may not undergo those routine swabs because there, there isn't, aren't enough personnel to check them or because uh, COVID is re- the real infection control priority. When someone does get sick with candida auris in the hospital, what does it look like? When someone gets an infection with candida auris, the most common type of infection would be a bloodstream infection. That's when Candida auris gets in the blood and it's detected by a blood culture. And the person can get really sick with fevers, low blood pressure, they might get confused and um, it can cause damage to their organs. It can cause organ failure like kidney failure um, or liver failure until it gets treated with antifungal drugs. In the worst case scenario, they can require intensive care in an ICU. Um, And if it goes untreated or if treatment is unsuccessful, um, for example, if the candida auris is highly resistant to the antifungal drugs, they can die. Anything else about the pandemic making this problem worse? Shortages of personal protective equipment, such as gloves and gowns, led many healthcare personnel in many facilities to resort to crisis capacity strategies, which really means that they reused gloves and gowns for many patients, in, particularly in COVID wards, and or had extended use of gloves and gowns. And what that can mean, if, if you have a few patients who are colonized with candida auris, and then you use gloves and gowns on those patients and then use them on other patients. If you don't know that those patients have candida auris colonization because you haven't done surveillance and checked them for candida auris colonization, and then you reuse gloves or gowns on other patients, um, you are probably spreading candida auris to those other patients. So that reuse explains how it can spread so easily in a COVID unit under those circumstances. So from just seven cases reported in 2016, where are we now with this pathogen in the United States? We're now at the point of really about 1,500 clinical cases having been reported in the past year, I believe. And and that's clinical cases, meaning cases of infection, not just colonization. Those first seven cases were uh, a combination of infection and colonization. So you have fought um, all kinds of different outbreaks in the hospital setting in your career. If you had a candida auris outbreak in a hospital you were responsible for, what would you do? Well, I think that, that there are good guidelines for 
combating a Canada Oris outbreak. And, and they're actually very similar to dealing with other outbreaks. So testing patients for colonization with Canada Oris is the first thing. Testing patients and isolating patients who have Canada Oris colonization. There are special cleaning standards for the hospital environment, and there are special cleaners that are required to eliminate Canada Oris from the hospital environment. And that's actually one of the other issues during the pandemic is that sometimes the wrong cleaners have been used that will clean SARS-CoV-2, but not Candida auris um, effectively will disinfect them. So using environmental cleaning very aggressively, walling off Candida auris by cohorting patients, which means putting all of the isolated patients and affected patients in one ward and having one set of uh, staff, nursing staff, take care of those patients. And then testing all patients on admission who come from long-term care facilities. I think those are the most important measures for both preventing and um, controlling an outbreak. And then more broadly, are there policies that healthcare can adopt to reduce the chance of this and other multi-drug resistant infections? Yes, absolutely. So I think the most effective response, um, both preventive and um, for remediation, is a regional public health response that's coordinated among facilities. And a good example of that is what's being done in California, where uh, the public health department is trying to coordinate responses among facilities in different regions because of spread from these nursing homes that have ventilated patients to acute care hospitals. If you actually, if you just go facility by facility, you really won't manage a problem that is actually regional. So um, another urgent task for public health. Um, I'm afraid so. And the other thing is that this has to be a horizontal intervention. This doesn't just affect Canada Oris. This affects really is across the board for multidrug resistant organisms. So it will have a benefit that is broader than just Candidorus. Got it. And I understand that there are some antibiotics that can be used, antifungal medications, I believe, um, that can be used for Candidorus, but whether they will continue to be effective is really a question. That's right. Most cases of Candidorus infection can be treated with echinocandins, which are one of the major classes of antifungal drugs. Actually, patients who are colonized, who are just carriers of Candida auris, don't need to be treated at all because the carrier state, colonization state, is not an an infected state. But those who are infected, for the most part, can be treated with this class of drugs. There have been a few cases in the United States of pan-resistant Candida auris in which the isolates are resistant to all drugs. But with good infection control, we can try to limit those cases. So in a sense, we're in in a race. We need to put in place these public health protections, establish these public health strategies before problems like Canada Oris and other multi-drug resistant organisms get worse. That's right. We need to re-implement the public health strategies that we know work. Dr. Palmore, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Sharfstein. Public Health On Call is produced by Joshua Sharfstein, Lindsay Smith-Rogers, and Stephanie Desmond. Audio production by Niall Owen McCusker, Matthew Martin, Spencer Greer, and Holly Cardinal, with support from Chip Hickey. Distribution by Nick Moran. Production support from Catherine Ricardo. Social media support from Grace Holes-Fernandez. Thank you for listening.